It's that time again. What's up, everybody? This is Dad's Land and Fab. Hope you enjoy the show. Deuces. Boom. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another special episode of Dads, Lads and Kebabs. Today we've got a guest on the show, people, and really looking forward to this one. So many questions, probably not enough time, but we'll make it work. <coughs> Let's do this. Hello, Mickey. How are you? How's your week been? Yes, I'm good now. Thank you for, thank you for asking. It's not all about you, mate. We've got guests, <laughs> we've got guests waiting in the back. I know they're in the green room waiting. All right then, the... my week's been good. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay then, Noel. Who do we have today then? Who is our special guest? Our special guest is Aiden. <laughs> <Paul. laughs> not prepared. It's Paul. It's Paul yeah. Paul. Right. I'll into this. Is uh, a very good uh, man. I met the other week. He did my past life regression. Uh, we got lots of questions for him. Very interested in the subject, and I will bring him in now. Hey, hey. Hello, good evening, good evening, good evening Paul. How both? Hello. Yeah, I'm keeping really good, really, really good, and it's uh, it's good. I'm delighted to be on here. So thank you, <laughs> thank you for coming on because I since seeing Mickey's video, that has made so many questions for me just come out, and I've been like. I need to know. I need to know everything on why Mickey found himself in the state that he was in towards the end of that video. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm just so excited. So, Paul, if Excellent. you'd like to introduce, introduce yourself and tell us a bit about what you do. Sure, yeah. So, my name's, well, you've introduced me, Paul Goddard. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist. I'm also a NLP master practitioner. That stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. Um, so that helps people get from a stuck state to a desired state. Just quickly, if some people say what is neuro-linguistic programming, because uh, if I ask a lot of people that, they think it's something to do with computer programming. So it's neuro, it's your not just your brain, but your whole neurological system. Linguistics, the language we use to yourself and each other. Uh, so many people are saying about all the things they can't do rather than what you can do. And program it takes on people like computer programs. So if you don't like the program that's in there, you can rewrite the software that you have. So that's kind of the neuro linguistic programming. And during the uh, training I did for hypnotherapy, I was also taught some past life regressions, but I've also gone on and trained with a, another professional to get even more on the past life regressions. And uh, it was something that I've always been interested in when I first set up 10 years ago. Uh, I just did like past lives as a side and then I was on a ghost paranormal investigation at Coldicott Manor uh, in Wales and from that moment onwards it just kind of I did a few regressions because I said oh because you know what ghost hunting is like you end up you end up being in the dark and it's quiet for <laughs> quite a lot of the time so yeah. to, I just sort of said to the organizer can I just do a couple because I've just recently got my certificate and I had a little mini audience and then people started booking me from there and the, the thing started slowly at first but uh, eventually snowboard so I'm delighted and that's kind of what people know me for for the hypnotic past life regressions that I do brilliant wow. Well, I can say it does work. <laughs> and I was listening, it does work very well. So I was actually shocked what happened to me. Uh, and can I just say, I think I've had 800 years of stress has come out of me after that session because I feel so much better. That's great since, to know. That's great news. Since great to that, hear. that day. So. Is, that quite, is that quite common then? It, like after a certain individual's had the regression done do they feel like lifted in any way or just yeah relieved? quite often yes quite often uh, i mean if if it is somebody generally going into a past life and you've had that stress that you've been hanging on to and people have no idea why they feel stressed why they're triggered out certain with, with certain things sometimes just going through to a past life experience will unlock something whether it's the person's generally gone through to past life or whether it's a metaphor and they've unlocked it it's up to the individual to to make up, up their mind about that but I, I always find it really fascinating and i've had some very compelling past life aggressions with people um you know and, and it's not just emotions sometimes people's personalities change uh for the better 
I've had people that have drowned in a previous life and through actually experiencing that as somebody else, it's released their fear of water. Um, yeah. Sometimes people uh, don't express themselves very well and very shy at expressing their own opinions. And, you know, they were with either a cruel father or a cruel husband or somebody cruel that would basically beat them if something that they didn't like came up this person's mouth. So in the past life, that person ended up just completely shutting down. And also as well, you know, I've known people that have just given away money as well. And in the past life, they were a miser. And it was at the end of their life, they think, what the hell have I done? You know, I, I've, I've wasted all these years I could have had, you know, with the, the people that mean the most to me. And then when they do go to this life to sort of compensate, they're just throwing money away and not put it into savings and and you know not not living the best that they could do with you know because everything in life is kind of like you you comes in you spend but also as well you, you can't just spend everything or, or you know give everything away so it's just a balance so after having that experience i've had people that have had better um better respect for money but not being a miser again but just more of a healthy respect for it so it is very common that people just absolutely get very upset during the regression just afterwards and uh, not everybody does but it's, it's it's quite common but i haven't had anybody said that was just awful i never want to experience that again it's always been very positive and if somebody has got a bit upset it's been a big relief for them and, and release mm -hmm. see i i felt really embarrassed i i sat there thinking oh my god i'm a grown man in my 40s and i am bawling like a little baby in front of paul and i'm like oh my <laughs> god I just felt so silly. You, but... You're not the first grown man and you're not the last grown man. That's the... <laughs> that's definitely not. But yeah, it, it, it definitely helped me, I think. So uh, Good. I'm very, so very when... pleased I went through with that. When people come to see you, do they come with expectations or are they completely open to what they're going to find out? It's all sorts. You tend to you have somebody open to that they're going to have an experience i don't get too many complete hardcore skeptics because quite often there'll be a, a wall up but i do have people who are skeptical and think what's going to happen where is this coming from another possibility could be it's some sort of genetic memory coming through which and that tends to be the skeptics kind of go to explanation for it is that the memory passes down through the genes uh like one of my friend's uncle didn't really care about how you dress you'd throw anything on you know and it would look quite a disaster some of what he he would wear but after having a liver transplant he suddenly became very fussy about what he would wear things have to be matching so his, his personality completely changed just purely from having a liver transplant and they say that some kind of of the memories the genes are in each of our organs so perhaps through the bloodline it can can pass down it could also be genuine past life regressions but people tend to come with all sorts of preconceived ideas i just tell each person to relax and let whatever they come up with in the regression just allow it through even if it seems completely bonkers just say what you get during the regression and it can all be looked up afterwards but uh, you get people that literally are really sort of upset you know during the death experience because they've been reintroduced to their father that passed away in that past life experience and until they actually wow. had that regression they had no previous knowledge to and then when they see them after the moment of passing then the the tears start flowing and stuff like that and it, it, it often not all the time but quite it's the usual pretty unemotional people that will just kind of you know let go and the, the tears all kind of happen but it's not panicking in that that situation i've been fortunate my trainers have told me what to do and i've had experience of that happening before and just keeping your head and knowing you've got work to do to help somebody because the last thing i want to do is just after experience somebody getting upset say right that's it you know off you go now you have to have that made my money <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. i don't care about you <laughs> yeah exactly but yeah people have all sorts of different ideas and they come with no uh, preconceived ideas some some of my clients that come through say oh i've i've always been fascinated uh with georgian periods uh, and the, the georgian I, I reckon i must have been like a lord of a manor in a, a georgian time and then they go to their past life and, and they were a chimney sweep in you know the east end of london and it's like i wasn't expecting that at all so sometimes it can be the complete unexpected occasionally people have interests and that comes up but i say more so it ends up being something completely utterly different that the person wasn't expecting at all yeah uh, can i just That's ask amazing. Mm -hmm. Is it is you say you're about your training? Is it a long process? 
Uh, the NLP certainly was. Uh, I mean, that took a long time. And I, I think it's important to have something which helps you dealing with people's emotions. Because when you ha do past lives, you have no idea what's going to come up, you know, with, yeah. with somebody. So the hypnotherapy training that I did was a four day intensive course. Um, you can have longer courses than that, that just are basically weekends. But I just wanted to spend a weekend away just truly learn it because also as well in the NLP, I learned quite a lot of hypnosis as well. And I was trained very well, but I also think it's not just getting your certificate. And then I did two other uh, regression trainings then afterwards for the past life hypnotic work. Yeah. But I think it's as well, as you can see, I've got a fair few books behind me, um, you know, from Darren Brown to small spiritual ones. Yeah. Uh, but it's important to always just continue your learning, read, um read what other people do i go to seminars that people do i used to go to a lot of nlp seminars in london which again tells you more about the mind and just how to sort of help people through the process which i think thinks important when you do this this sort of work so you can pick up certificates online but i think it's not just that it's what you do with it afterwards and increase your your learning yeah. as well so mickey described that when he first went under um regression he's the corridor the corridor with different doors that's how he described it to me was the corridor yeah. um how do you know what door how do you know obviously mickey said he had three different doors i think i recall you saying yeah i had three yeah that came up would that sorry would that mean i have i've had three lives that's I what, that was think... my question oh, sorry yeah um that's what people in hypnosis have said that's what it is. Um, I've asked their subconscious mind, you know, what these rep doors represent as well. Because I don't, I'm very careful with the regression not to lead uh, people as well, because I like to get what is really coming out of the subconscious mind. And when somebody's in hypnosis, they're very suggestible, which is one way you can implant positive ideas and suggestions for people that come for hypnotherapy. It's also as, as why when you get quite extrovert people on the stage for stage hypnotist when they have a stage hypnosis they're doing all sort of crazy things up on the stage so you can be very suggestible at that stage so i don't say do each of these doors represent a past life because the answer you're probably going to get back then is yes but i have asked people what do each of those doors represent either at the beginning or at the end and they say each of the the different lies because that corridor isn't a real corridor it's the gateway through to the subconscious mind the gateway through to to a past life but that's what people sort of say to me is that it's the different doors most people tend to about three to seven you do get some people as well that have just it just goes on and on and on Smile um, the I, <laughs> yeah i always say to people you know, when, when, when I choose it, that the one that they feel would be most appropriate and they're most drawn to go through for that experience at this particular time. So that's how I get people to choose the doors. There's different methods of inducing um, going through to subconscious mind for past life. You can have something called the mists of time. I do that occasionally. Uh, other times I've dropped people up from, from the sky because part of the induction is getting people to use their imagination and getting them to use uh, their sort of subconscious mind. And I get them to do a lot of visualizing to go deeper into hypnosis. So I do with some people just take them up high and high. I think I did that with, with, with you, Mikey. Uh, but I then sort of say to drop out the sky into a past life. So there's different ways oh, of see. inducing the hypnosis, but it's, it's, you know, I tend to do the corridor cause it gives you an idea potentially how many past lives people have had and I, I tend to find people like that one most of all but if i've done loads of demonstrations i tend to mix up a bit and mix yeah. up inductions just so people don't see the same thing over and over again it mix up a bit because you see when when um, you said to me like you're at your house currently in 2024 and mm. then you float up see see your house from above i said to you <clears> no, didn't i i said i thought that once it's all once it's all over i then come down back to my house back to reality back to no, like my normal self I, I wondered if that was how you sort of bring people back but it, it's not no i mean that, that i actually really like that idea so we i, didn't I might change far, it <laughs> <laughs> i might i might add that in sometimes as well uh it's you know the more you use your creative 
visualization the more deeper people go into hypnosis so that's why oh, i get I people to do visualizing to begin with because if you see a stage hypnotism show with a stage hypnotist the first sort of 20 minutes of the show they all sat down and at that moment they have their eyes closed they're not jumping up mm. running thinking they're strippers or running down to the audience thinking they've just scored a goal and then celebrating on somebody's lap it's not all just that sort of thing <laughs> that, that kind of happens first of all it's quite minor things like you're you're being chased by the police and then you know the police are, are after you and they're all kind of doing this and it, it, it their eyes are closed at that because at that time they're quite in a sort of light hypnosis and the more yeah. they're engaging it the deeper they're going into hypnosis so a lot of the, the beginning part of it, even though somebody's in hypnosis, I'm just making sure, taking it deeper and deeper, making sure the visualization is is going well, and then I can then take somebody through to a past life. So that's kind of that's why all that that part of it is is just kind of helping people go go deeper into hypnosis. I like to be I like to be truly sure. You can do it quicker than sometimes I do, but I just like to just spend an extra five minutes just to truly make sure somebody's as deep as they can go and also each person gives me subtle little clues to the way their facial expressions are showing yeah. they're going deeper into hypnosis and sometimes I think yeah just a little deeper would be be better so I do a bit more visualization so that's what it's that's what it's all about it's like training <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely you know stretching. when you go yeah you're stretching before you do your 100 meters or something yeah, yeah. like that you know you just don't just do it you kind of build up the muscle a little yeah, bit and yeah. flexibility to begin with okay does it take is everybody that goes under or into hypnosis does is everybody different in terms of how long it takes you to help them get there? um you, well you can actually do it pretty instantaneously as well and uh, you, you see a lot of those videos on youtube where you just grab somebody and jerk them and, and say sleep i tend to find that looks brilliant for a stage show and i do very very occasionally uh will do that sort of induction um just again just to sort of keep my hand in with it but i tend to find that sometimes not everybody enjoys that very much and it doesn't really allow people to relax or feel so trustful then if you just because it's a shock induction and the way a shock induction works is you tell them that sleep will be the the way they go and when i say sleep you just put yourself into that deep state just before you drift off to sleep you know what that's like and then you sort of say when i do a certain thing but you do it such a way that it shocks them then the mind thinks what the hell was that and then where well, the mind's thinking what the hell was that you then implant suggestion to go deeper so that's kind of the way the way that works i did do a a shock induction for the experience that i had on help my house is haunted because i thought it would look better for the camera <laughs> that way but also as well uh you know when I, when I did it as well i thought that i needed to have that shock to get barry to enter um the belief that he was going to see everything back in 1825 so that's oh, kind wow. of what i did yeah 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 okay. so if you put in the chapel of unrest you'll yeah. you'll see me me do that oh wow wow i'm gonna have to look at that <laughs> yeah. i'm just so intrigued i'm so intrigued <laughs> to what it would be like for me everything that you've been talking about i've just been thinking am i a skeptical could i do this what would happen for me i've always had thoughts feelings that i i had another life all the, all my mm -hmm. life i've had that thought and feeling and i've never i've never want i've never delved into it i've never thought about delving into it. i didn't even know past life regression was a thing until mickey mentioned it to me and told me about it and i was like wow maybe i could maybe i could do this it's funny there's a lot of hypnotherapists but well, not a lot of them some there's quite a few proportion if you look at hypnotherapists online will do past life regressions but they tend to not advertise it i think they're weird that they're worried that people think it's just weird or too woo woo but i found the paranormal groups that i've got into have been so welcoming about it and i, I tend to find that it's actually been nothing but good for me because i've got a lot of people that have booked because they see me doing the um the the regressions online and they kind of see what i like the sort of style and it kind of makes people feel oh, i wouldn't mind seeing this person for this this particular um stuck state that i'm in and i want to get over that so for me although some people are very fearful it's going to be negative towards them i found it nothing but but helpful for me mm. do you have a lot of skepticals around 
that you have proved wrong? Uh, well, the thing is, is I I, I can't really because I think whatever you the trouble is with with with, with very people very skeptical is that I think that unless they've experienced it themselves, then they're, they're going to not believe it. You know, they're just going to be stuck in it. No, it's not right. They're all you know. I think it's very compelling. They're making it up. I mean, I did a. I did a, 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 a live and the person that went under hypnosis was very good, got an, an awful lot right. Um, and, you know, it's kind of, if they get an awful lot right, you know, the person made it up. If they get an awful lot wrong, you know, it, it didn't matter anyway. So I can't say I've ever proved anybody wrong, but I have had people that really didn't think they're going to go anywhere with the past lives and think, wow, that was, that was pretty vivid. Unreal for me. I wasn't expecting that. Um, I think yeah. the thing which people always think in regressions that they're going to go to some bizarre zombie type states. Um, they're going to have no control because all hypnosis is self hypnosis. Even the really quick inductions they induced it themselves. So I think that people just didn't expect it to be so pleasant and didn't expect what they come up with to be so so vivid. So yeah, that's that. See, I was I was really worried beforehand. Because I didn't really know how it all worked, and I thought, "What if you bring the wrong version of yourself back?" I said this to you, didn't I, Niall? Yeah. What yeah. if you bring like the 1947 Mickey back? You know. But obviously, well, going through it, you don't go that. F you can't change your personality or no. your life. No. And also, as well, what happens? I like it to be a learning curve for mm. people. So uh, that usually people if there is a change it's for the positive um but i also say as well that when you finish the experience that the doors will be closed to those past lives for now but it can be reopened whenever you you want to so it's just that's another way of bringing the session to a close that says you know that's that is behind and bring you back into the here and now 2024 or whatever year it will be <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you ever get people that come back to you that want to re go over it again and again? Yes, it? yes, you do, and and find out more information uh, from it. Most definitely, uh, mostly people want to do that for personal reasons. Because one of the most there's been lots of compelling ones I've had, and some that I can't say because I always make a promise with mm -hmm. people that when they come to me. You know, unless they want me to put it on their channel, because some say, "Oh, look, can you put it on your channel, please?" And I say, "Yeah, yeah sure. If you're happy for me to do that, <laughs> I will do that." Uh, but most people, they just want to see it themselves and do their research afterwards. So some people do come back and want to find more because each time you go into hypnosis, you go a little bit deeper. You get more and more used to it. So each trance is a different, slightly deeper. So I do get people that want to experience the past life, and you can just sort of remind somebody at the beginning of the experience if you're going to take them through the corridor method again just saying you know you remember that door the one that took you through to this particular life we go back to that life then you can just ask more more questions um so people do do that so um so sorry if, if you were yeah, doing say you were revisiting a life would you obviously you you record everything would you go back are they sort of like your notes would you go back or would you rely on the person to tell you what yeah i tend to not ask the same sorts of things and people are good they say the same brothers sisters the same names and things like that but i tend not to be too noteworthy because you know you've explored a certain part of things yeah. and sometimes people will say something like i like to explore a little bit more of my school days and find out more about the the names and of the teachers oh, okay. and things yeah. like that so you go to that specific time and and ask ask that because they've already been through to the death experience i don't oh, yeah. feel i need to go and make them relive oh, okay. all that again but i like to do it for the <laughs> yeah. first one because it brings closure to that particular life it the, the cycle's gone through and there's no well there's always questions to be asked but there's no big unanswered questions by the end of it no oh, okay that's amazing I, i'm hooked already have you had Good. your own experience have you had your own experience uh, yes so the first time i did it i it was somebody who trained on the course uh, and they wanted to practice on me afterwards. And I went back to being, I think it was the 1600s. The trouble it wasn't actually recorded. Um, and 
I went back to being a carpenter in the Lake District. Uh, I remember one of the very first ones I had uh, life experiences when I did my research, well, did my training with with Maria Weekly, who's also a dowser, fascinating lady, uh, really really great lady. Uh, I then on that one went back to a, a hunter gatherer called Rannoch. Now it was before oh. you. I felt it was like Norwegian, Norway, Norway, sort of that sort of area, but I didn't really know because I felt like it had gone like that far back that it wouldn't be known as being the Norway no today, but just kind of felt to me like that sort of area. Um, I did one in Roman times. Uh, that was just a self one listening to one of my discs that I haven't got behind me because <laughs> it's good too. Uh, I think I was during lockdown. I did that. Uh, and I went to 1960s Russia as well. That was more of an intense uh, oh, wow. experience, that one. But yeah, that was that was good. So are you saying that you can put yourself in that state? Yeah. So I've uh, I've usually gotten behind me. I don't I don't at the moment, which is which is great advertising to me, isn't it? But I do <laughs> I do sell CDs and MP3s, um, and that's like a guided past life regression. And I, occasionally I'll, I'll put it on and. And listen to it myself so uh i went to a recording studio to have that made just to make the sound as good as possible there's four tracks on it there's an introduction to say what people are going to experience there's a visualization exercise because some people really don't think they can visualize which we all can visualize but it's just to prove to people you can visualize because otherwise you would go out to your car more and you think wow so this is what my car looks like is it you've got that visual memory of what your car actually looks like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um then you've got the regression and then uh if anybody feels they need healing there's a fourth track for uh, any healing because i wanted to put that in but not everybody that comes to me needs to have a healing session some just say actually the experience what i've been through was the healing in itself mm. uh, other ones it's it's quite a a pleasant past life and when it comes to death experience they're in their 80s and they just kind of say oh, it's time for me to pop off now and they don't seem to be that particularly that bothered about it so it's not traumatic enough for yeah. them so they're just happy to just not have the healing but i always say even if it seems uh like just the most calm gentle past life i always ask somebody if they they want any healing because i think you've got that duty of care to offer that to somebody after a session yeah the healing i found very beneficial i really uh, needed that <laughs> you needed Good. you need you needed a hug man that's what you need <laughs> a hug and some chocolate <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. for me though knowing you and all the years that i've known you i have never seen in fact i've never seen any form of emotion that would ever make me think that's how you would react mm. so when i when you when you said to me I'm going to send you the clip, but you know, don't laugh. And I was like, I, I, I couldn't laugh because I, it's something I'd never seen come from you. And then no. you told me about it on the podcast recently about what you went through and I think your Italian history. Yeah. As it yeah. were. And it's just like, how do you go from that, from you to that? It's, for me, it's mind, it's mind blowing. See, I've got a question from that. Um, so beforehand, oh, this is what I was thinking. I was thinking, could you make up a story in your head, like a, a, a life with who you were, where you were, like something really cool. And actually, once you're in the process, could you get that out? Or would you know if someone was, do people fake it? Can they fake it? Yeah, well, hypnosis isn't, and, and hypnotherapy and what I do isn't a truth drug. So no. uh, the times when one might feel a little more sceptical, although I tend to be very trusting with people, is if I've got an audience in front of me and they want to be the star, for example. Yeah. But when I've done those, that hasn't really happened because if you wanted to be a star, you, you would make up a really amazing sort of past life. Mm. And people don't tend to do that, you know. Some <laughs> I, I remember having one person who was like a monk, and they were they were just kind of saying their prayers each day, and nothing was really happening at all. And I mm. took them to their most happiest day, and I think they were eating some soup or something like that. That that was their most happiest day. So it wasn't like <laughs> it was absolutely rooted. People still find it fascinating, which I was pleased about. Um, but most of the time, people come come to me 
Uh, they really don't want me to share it. The only people who get the video, and even then they're embarrassed about watching the download uh, um, sometimes, and they come up with a really good, compelling past life, but they don't want to share it at all um, with, with, with people. So I find that it's compelling. They don't want to share it with people. It makes me think that why would you come to me to pay me money to make something up but only to be seen to yourself. You don't really want to even show your closest friends or family. It's just for you to watch back and, and find things out afterwards. So it doesn't make sense to me that, that people would come just to make it up. So again, it's yeah. not a truth drug. If it was going to be the most skeptical thing, I mean, there's, there's several, I've mentioned it before, but it's, it's always, it's always really good. I've done it in videos, but I think it's, it's a good a grounding in, what people might be experiencing. So it could potentially be fraud. And this comes from Ian Stevenson. Now, Dr. Ian Stevenson passed away in 2007, but he went around the world investigating children with spontaneous past life claims. So one of the possibilities of, of what it could be is that it was fraud, but Ian Stevenson said these children would come up with the most compelling things that they wouldn't be able to remember things that well at that age. So he comes across very little fraud himself. Another possibility said it could be like some sort of fantasy. Now, maybe it's some sort of metaphor played out to help people that are in hypnosis to get from their stuck state to their desired state. So it could be a metaphor playing out. Another possibility is that it's something called cryptonesia. So that's hidden memories. So that's the fact that you might have been told and people have information at school, totally forgotten it consciously, mm. uh, but are able to say what they've experienced under hypnosis you know under what they've learned at school so they come out with this experience that they think has happened to them but it's really hidden memories from they've been told at school maybe even seen on television some time ago something called paranesia which is people crediting more um to the regression than they've actually had so that's why i make sure i record what's happening so people can't start adding little bits to it because yeah, yeah. that does happen not on purpose but people that see magic shows they'll say oh this happened it was really brilliant and then the magician said that's impossible to do that but you know because they've just added that extra detail themselves yeah. people just do that you can't help it it's not people purposely making it up it's just human beings being human and making up the gaps so that's why i make sure everything is recorded yeah. Now, I did mention genetic memory earlier, um, and that's a good possibility. The only time that would fail, Dan, is that the, the, it would come through the genes, but when the, 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 the son or daughter come through the father into the mother, then the person having the aggression then wouldn't go to the death experience. It would just come to a blank at that point. So genetic memory explains only so much. But there's also his paranormal interpretation, so that is that it could potentially be some form of ESP, extrasensory perception. Now, Ian Stevenson with the children with a spontaneous past life, so they're saying things like, I want to go to my real home, or when I was big, I did this. Um, he sort of said that maybe it's some sort of possession. Now, I'm sure nobody's ever possessed whilst in my chair having hypnosis, but perhaps it's some form of channeling going on. But also as well, it could actually just generally be that it is reincarnation. So that's all the different possibilities of what it could be. But with Ian Steamson and myself, I, I put fraud actually pretty, pretty low down on on the, the, the scale, particularly as well. You know, I wouldn't want to go somewhere and just spend my money just making things up and not showing anybody. No, no, no. So this is just hypothetical. If, say, there was a crime that went on, um, the police are involved obviously would or could they come to see you and you would put maybe a suspect under hypnotherapy would that work could you sort of get the truth out of them or, or would it be all That's like fabricated fun. yeah it, it would be good uh but unfortunately you can't because uh even in hypnosis people can still make up what they want to and a, and a suspect yeah. would not say i did it it could i didn't do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it could potentially be that it's uh you know that, that somebody uh that has witnessed something because it could be very good at pulling out hidden memories but again yeah, that's what, I, that's what I you thought. have to yeah. you have to be so so careful because then in the court of law you have to prove that the person really genuinely was hypnotized really prove that and there'll just be no way of really proving it and i, I have had people uh, that have come to me and said i'm going for a court case 
can you hypnotize me and see what happened because i think somebody did something to me and i always say that is very dangerous ground because uh, you know perhaps the subconscious mind is filling in a blank when something yeah, yeah. sinister didn't happen and you fill it in as being saying sinister and then after that you, you've just opened up a can of worms so i think it's in some states uh used for certain I, I don't never a criminal but certain states over here i don't think it's accepted and i, I would be very cautious if anybody wanted to be hypnotized for that particular reason uh, missing objects yes yeah, certainly or, or past lives yeah most definitely I, I will do that but i'm i'm just very cautious with you know when it's criminal investigations yeah well, i was just wondering because i thought maybe that has, that's ever happened or you've heard of it happening before but obviously there's there's things yeah. that you you have like your rules and your ethics that you stand by and yeah not yeah doing that. <laughs> yeah no absolutely and i think as well you know if it went to court and it happened to go into the newspaper and then it was said hypnotist did this and it was thrown out it's then giving you a really bad reputation yeah. Yeah, straight yeah, away yeah. Your business is finished. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah <laughs> yeah you spoke about obviously going back to mickey's regression um obviously mickey said that he come from an italian family do you ever get clients whose language changes through i haven't although people uh, well i've had very strange names come through from different languages that seem right to me uh i had one just the other day actually here but i've not had somebody actually speak in a different language but you know some hypnotherapists have claimed that's happened to them so you know i, I i'm sure it will happen at some point uh I, the trouble is i'm very bad at language so <laughs> i wouldn't know what the heck to ask them if i was uh, if somebody did start speaking but you could still say can you speak this language but i tend to find people tend to be more english mine when i went back to russian time i was aware of what i was doing what i was feeling but i could hear what i was saying it wasn't like i was i was talking english in the regression but i i just had a understanding what it could be but i could sort of say the words but like as if you had a russian film on and yeah, you would then yeah. say what did they say then and you would try and repeat it that's that's how it was for me when i was experiencing it i don't know what it was like for yourself with with, with languages mickey mikey so i <laughs> uh, no, no it, was, it was just everything was english like to be fair i don't think i actually i didn't speak to anybody mm. Like you, <clears throat> you were asking about family, my job, what I was doing, where I was at these different ages. So the conversation with whoever I was speaking to, it never really happened. So for me, that that language um, didn't really come into play for myself. Mm -hmm. It was only like you were asking me questions about where I was and when I was about to die, what happened to me, etc. Yeah. So uh, there was no communication with other people in my past life. Mm. on that occasion anyway yeah yeah so, so people will experience it in different ways i mean yours was quite vivid yeah it some was. people are more sketchy they, they get what's happening to them um but uh like one of my books some it says it's quite funny you know what do you see lots of hats wear on heads <laughs> you're really trying to <laughs> drag, you're trying to drag the information out of people and sometimes people aren't just sitting there enjoying the experience here and i'll just sort of sit there for a bit because i don't rush people i think it's important to allow that that sort of time for people to answer but sometimes yeah. i have people and i sort of think well i've waited quite some time i'm going to have to prompt them again and sometimes they say, oh that was so vivid it was so great and i think well you haven't really given me an awful lot so it's nice to know that i'm getting that feedback but they've had a good experience and that's the main thing mm. well this is it right so if, if if somebody is under and they are in the best experience they but they're not giving it to you until the end it's like well has it worked have they just come out and had a really good dream <laughs> you know? yes yeah absolutely and you have to really watch particularly with this and i sort of I make sure that somebody's getting relaxed because a lot of the regressions I do are slightly slower. They're not so much the instantaneous ones, as I, I said, for the reasons why I do that. But I'm sort of watching people. And I, I sometimes think I better start asking some questions now because I could see if I carry on too much longer, 
they are going to be asleep. They are getting that, that <laughs> sleepy right now. Uh, and funny enough, when I do my lives, you sometimes see people saying, I have to turn the sound off a bit. I'm going into hypnosis here as well, which is why you never properly see a full induction uh, on any television shows because you don't want somebody that's ironing. That's why they say, uh, you know, <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> chopping vegetables etc uh yeah. you, you don't you that's you know when when they sort of say you know if you've listened to a self-hypnosis uh cd or mp3 they say don't listen to this whilst driving operating machinery <laughs> and i have told people do not do that but i did have somebody said oh it was great i listened to it in my car it's like you what you didn't do that i told you not wow. to do that but yeah you really don't want yeah you, you've got to keep your wow. yourself alert <laughs> Uh, what have you ever had any bad experiences when putting somebody under or something's gone wrong no uh um, I, i've had people having strange sensations sometimes but i think that that would happen anyway because I've, i've done this since 2010 i've not i've had very very occasionally people that have got nothing uh and i will sort of say to them you know here's my mp3 to listen to away and listen to that and then come back when you start getting something and most time people do because i don't just say we well, didn't get anything off you go i will i will really help people to get an experience because it's, it's important that people do have experience but out of there there is still a very very few people that really won't get anything at all mm. um and it, and it and it happens you know whether it's because they haven't had a past life before whether they just um you know can't uh you know they just can't go there because they've got a block at themselves i'm i'm not sure but i've never had a negative experience i've had i've had people that have been like murderers in a past oh, life wow. or, or killed yeah. people which is is quite sort of uh good uh well it's not good for the person that was killed but it's, it's a good right. experience to experience during hypnosis and I, I tend to find the people that go to that usually are actually quite spiritually open people and i think because they've done a lot of self-work on themselves they're okay to go to something dark they might have done in a previous life because they've they've worked on themselves a lot a lot now but yeah, i have had people that have have been not so not not so kind it's only i think been a handful of people you know it's it's, it's about the same amount of famous people that i've i've kind of had come well i don't think i've had any famous but like quite well known sort of in, in prominent places uh like the titanic i had a, had a couple of people on the titanic there's only been two and i've done loads oh, wow, and loads cool. and loads so yeah that yeah. that was quite quite good uh the titanic ones i've got and, and one of those got over their fear of water jack. as well <laughs> yeah yeah that, there wasn't a jack there <laughs> put, me the, put me on the door <laughs> let yeah, me on yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you bitch yeah. <laughs> move over <laughs> exactly yeah yeah <laughs> wow <laughs> I guess everyone's got their own journey, right? And especially when they do go into it, you don't know what you're going to, you don't know. I mm. guess, any, I, I imagine the people that you spoke to that found themselves on the Titanic were not expecting. No, no, no. And they're not like, oh, I reckon I was on the Titanic. Um, I, I tend to find people don't, I mean, I do hear skeptical people say, well, the trouble is everybody that has a regression are someone famous and quite a, a big skeptical people in in the field that have been on television have said that the trouble is that is just not the case at all because if if i went to the news if you went to the newspaper and said i hypnotized somebody and they were chimney sweeping in, in london or they were they were a chamber maid you know in in the early 1900s or something like that it's not going to get people punching the air thinking no. this is a brilliant story i'm going to put it in the newspaper but if you say if you somebody comes and says you know i reckon i was um you know Queen jack Victoria in a past life or Jack the Ripper, another one, you know, they'll go, right, we'll have that in the paper. So, you know, that's why these stories get in the paper. Um, Steve Mulligan, who is part of the Paradox Club, he was also, I took that recording and stuck it on my channel. His was a very compelling one and his life was in Wales, but that got into the paper because a lot of facts were coming up. It actually went into like the mirror in the end and quite a lot of people were following it, but uh, Steve always has been somebody who didn't want it for the fame of it. He just yeah. wanted to know more about this person. He might have been in a previous life, and they actually Steve and his his girlfriend they they went to Hlandidno, where this experience of Sydney Sutcliffe 
who was uh, a gunner in the First World War, shot down over Cambry. They wanted to to ha put together some of the missing bits and pieces that mm, he wow, had wow. from the regression. And what is particularly compelling about that one is Steve, when he was a child, would would go on holiday to to Wales, and I think only visited Llandudno on a couple of occasions, but when they were there, Steve really loved it, felt like he was at home. And they sort of said, we've got to go to, uh, say, the pier from from here or wherever it was. And Steve go, oh, that's all right. When he was quite a, a small child, say, I know how to get us there and be able to just take them a shortcut through to the pier. And his mum like, how do you know that? Wow. So that was really compelling. But yeah, Steve just wanted it because it was originally in a, in a local newspaper and he, he wanted it and his girlfriend wanted it. Just, just purely so that they could sort of, if anybody had any information about Sydney Sutcliffe, to see if some of the things he was coming about the home life were right, any information that might be. Uh, so he didn't really want the, the fame of it or, or the story to go that big. He just wanted to know more about it. And I find that's with most people. Most people don't want to have their experience broadcast everywhere, but they just want to know more about it. So what got you into hypnotherapy and performing past life regression in the first place because it's not something that you sort of want to do when you're a kid is it like you want to be a footballer or a doctor uh funny what, enough <laughs> what, what okay maybe <laughs> i'll shut up <laughs> no 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 it's, it's fine funny enough it, hypnosis was uh one of the things i wanted to do as a, oh, wow. as a kid um, what was the reason for what was the reason well, was there somebody you was... liked on telly or you'd seen uh, well, it was uh, not for the reasons I do it now. I used to watch the Paul McKenna program as as, okay. as a kid, yeah. and I used to, to to think to myself, and I used to say, "Well, it'd be fun to do that." You know, and I'd love to get the kids to do some very mad things at, at school. That'd be such fun to do that. You know, as a kid, <laughs> yeah. a kid would think. Um, so I watched a program about a dentist who was a hypnotist, and he helped hypnotize people to. Um, get them over the fear of the drill and okay, uh, that's good. Yeah. they showed part of the induction now i didn't realize at that point that they only show part of it to stop people going with hypnosis for the reasons that i mentioned earlier you know because yeah. you don't want to operate machinery so when you saw a very short, small bit i thought that's it because there wasn't youtube if you put on youtube you can just put how to hypnotize and you come up with loads of different videos loads of different inductions but then you couldn't do that so i thought i'm going to i'm going to hypnotize the the class you know and, and get some of them to do some really crazy things and i <laughs> had one volunteer it just wasn't working and he was looking quite bored and out of desperation i grabbed one of the plugs from the sinks and started dangling it in front of his face and it just it just didn't work um <laughs> But I've always had that fascination with the mind and what hypnosis oh, okay. is. But I got, I kind of left that behind. Uh, yeah. And I wanted to get into nightclub DJing and radio broadcasting because I, I, I love a lot of music. I've, I've got a lot of music episodes. And I used to, I used to DJ in some very small pre club bars and one or two nightclubs. But my, my goal would have been uh, like DJing at Cafe de Mar or, or something like that, oh, you know, one of the big yeah, sort yeah. of, yeah, big places. Yeah. Uh, and radio broadcast as well. Like I'd like to have like been like Danny Ramplin or Pete Tong, that's that sort of thing. That's that's kind of where my goal was. I only kept the very small stuff and did a bit of volunteering in local radio because of fear of rejection. And yeah, it was through yeah, that fear yeah. of rejection I got the Paul McKenna Change Your Life in, in Seven Days book. Yeah, I remember them. Yeah. 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 So I got that and started feeling a lot more confident and pushing myself forwards. Um and then my dad became quite unwell with cancer and he was using a lot of the self-hypnosis mm. to uh, make himself feel better, try and heal himself. It, it didn't actually get that far, but he was getting some strength back. And it was at that point, I think, you know, this is what I want to do. I actually want to make a difference in, in people's life. I became inspired basically through, through my dad. So mm. that's how I got into uh into doing the hypnosis and how it made me feel you know and i think as well as much as i love music music will always be a big part of my life but i, yeah. I think i felt as well that when you're a nightclub dj you're giving uh people happiness for a night if they like your music if you don't you'd say not doing that for night but <laughs> if, if they like your music you're giving them happiness for night but if you can use these tools because i felt so much more confidence confident in myself through the Paul McKenna change your life in seven yeah. days that I thought you know I want to do this for, for others and it was then through the 
taking the training that I learned a bit about past lives. But I found that that can be very healing. And also as well, it fed with my work, the interest in the paranormal, because I was mm. out doing the paranormal investigations. Yeah. Uh, absolutely loving it. I don't do very much now just because of time, because you're, you're up to quite late in the morning. And also when I started doing paranormal investigations, it was either the, the, the landlord of the pub would say, yeah, come in, we'd, lo we'd love you to know enough to see what you get on your cameras and just send us yeah. some footage through. Some would say, can you, like give us a 10 pounds each but now it's like right that'll be 120 pounds each please for an <laughs> investigation so I, I i still can feed that that paranormal interest in myself through the past life regressions but also as well have an option of, of of helping people and if some people then just come from experience which they just are interested in and feel a lot better as well then that's an extra bonus to me yeah just as a side note what's the best location you've ever been to paranormal wise uh you can't really investigate there anymore unfortunately but it's because it, the the owner doesn't really want it now but it was cafe rene it was cafe rene in gloucester that was for activity wise yeah. uh only once it disappointed and i had been there quite a few times uh i'll send it across to you some of the 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 because i made some radio documentaries about oh, okay. some of the experiences yeah. so i'll send through the recording of that uh woodchester mansion was also a really good place yeah, good, yeah. uh it's, i found it one of those places either it's completely flat nothing happens or it's yeah. very active first time i went i had a cold and spent the entire time next to the fire trying to keep warm sipping coffee <laughs> thinking this this is a really really expensive you know night to be next to a fire yeah. then i i did the uh another night and it, it was it was really good i, I we caught like a scream or um we all, all of us were in one location so it couldn't have been anybody only other potentials what it could be would have been a scream from uh screeching tires because you know it's you, you can pick the sound up because it's there's no windows in the place mm. uh or or maybe it was a fox scream but it does does sound very human but it was funny because all of us just erupted at that point because we were all we were all sort of like um we all knew we were there and we just heard it in the distance it was quite a loud scream but it sounded like at the end of the corridor and, and that was it everybody panicked <laughs> true true most haunted everybody yeah. screaming the camera flying around everywhere same time yeah yeah Hysteria. yeah it. It makes a good yeah. episode <laughs> it does absolutely but it's, it's so funny the first thing i did was start laughing afterwards because it was actually quite funny you know that everybody got so so shocked by it but i'll send that that footage through to you anyway oh, that'd be funny yeah Brilliant. yeah <laughs> One of the questions I was going to ask is, is there any other areas in hypnosis that you explore in? My background is I am a stop smoking consultant. Excellent. A lot, of, a lot of my clients, are, they've experienced hypnosis. They've tried hypnosis. They tell me that it worked for a couple of years and then they found themselves back smoking. So have you had an experience with smokers or anything Yes, like uh, sometimes as well it's finding what somebody really wants and, and making sure what they really, really want. Now, some people will go and you say, why do you want to do this? And ask me, my girlfriend wants me to stop. You, you, you know that you're on an uphill battle because they really don't want, they don't want to, do it, yeah. to stop. Um, it, but yeah, it can be very effective. It can be very effective. I think you have to be aware that some people, you've got to find out if they really want to truly stop some people say they want to just have one or two with a drink at the weekend and if that's what they want it's not my right to say you're not doing this at all it has to be from their own decision so it might be that really subconsciously they want to have one or two with just a drink at, at the weekend if that's what they want i'll sort of tap them to 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 allow you to do it and that tends to be quite as long as that's what they really want quite effective but there's different reasons why people go back to it now hypnosis can be very effective and for some people there's different gateways to your subconscious mind and for some people the hypnosis they've already done a lot of work on themselves to stop the hypnosis will just be enough of a difference to tilt them being that they totally give up from smoking emotions play a big part of the smoking so you're dealing why the the emotions um also as well there's a desire for having the identity so you know people want to fit into groups um repetition 
is also a, a really good part of it as well, is that you have to make sure you put sync in every single time that they may want to light up. So if somebody sorts of stressed, you've got to replace it with something else. And it's good replacing it with something healthy because uh, sometimes people would say, oh, I want to replace it with having a sweet. If you do too much, that you might end up rotting your teeth. But allowing something when those emotions come in that you take some some deep breaths. So it's important to realize why people smoke, why they do what they do. Um, and sometimes just allow a few sessions to quit smoking. I think uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people do advertise these very quick. You'll just come for one session and yes. you won't need to smoke again. I think sometimes it takes just longer than that, keeping the hypnosis going. But, you know, if somebody really wants to quit smoking, I offer a session with a free backup. But sometimes people need several sessions just to get them to where they want. And I think some people built up this one session. It's all it's all over and dusted. There's some great hypnotherapists out there and I'm learning every single day. Uh, and I keep reading books every single day. But it's important to realize that some people, and I'm not knocking people to do this because I started there as well, but sometimes you take training, you get, this is your quit smoking script. They read yeah. it out and it works for a little while, then you, you go back to it. So there's so <clears> many <throat> different reasons why people smoke and it's, it's sometimes digging and you must find a replacement because there's always a saying nature abhors a vacuum. So if you take away something, yeah. you've got to replace it with something. Absolutely, absolutely. One of the things that I have, because I did a lot of research today, and a lot of hypnosis that I kept coming across was the invisible gastric sleeve that was advertised quite mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. And it turns out the price for that, I, I guess because it's popular and people want to have people, you know, definitely want to work on their weight loss. However, the price for that fluctuates massively. You know, some people say they'll, they'll have amazing results after, like you said, just after one or two sessions. And some of the pricing for that and i was thinking now is that a bit far-fetched that you're promising people the best results and this gastric invisible gastric sleeve is that a bit too far-fetched to sell that to somebody well i i have my smoking being a little more pricey than the other because i want to make sure the people that come because i think the average smoker i think spends something like 400 pounds a month on on cigarettes yeah. it's it's a massive yeah. amount that they spend so literally you know it's 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 just two weeks worth for like a, a session for me so one i want to make sure because you want to see i just want to see if it works because i've had so many people that when i first started all oh, my friends would say i want to to quit they didn't really want to quit but i would i would try and work on them and, and it would again work for a few weeks and then they'll go back to smoking because i i didn't know then what 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 i know now but I think when the price speed up, you make sure that somebody truly wants it. And with, with the gastric band thing, I mean, I, I, I kind of think I, I want to be affordable for, for people, but you will have a massive price sometimes because I think if you if you paid up a huge amount of money for something, uh, you you want you think this better work, you know. So I think there's, there's that reason yeah. why people whack the price up. Because I think when when you've paid up like say thousand or a couple of thousand saying you say this will have to work now i'm desperate this will have to work and i think that there's you could just throw the money i think that 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 works well because the ex expectation behind it is is a big part belief is such a big part behind hypnosis where if you say i'll do this for you for 30 quid it's like well i'm just going to check it out see if it works so <laughs> i <laughs> i try and be respectful to myself with my prices uh, i throw a lot of work in so it's not just a those don't hypnotize people i will create a special recording for them through what I've done as well as giving them a generic one. I'll put lists of things for them to, to do. We'll discuss it throughout as well, you know, to make sure they're happy. So it's never just me telling what client what to do. We work it out together. And then I kind of then also put a way forward. So you've got NLP exercises, a way forward, their personal recording, a, a generic recording. So that is reflected in, in my price. But I always say to people, I really want to make sure that you get from the session what you really want to get from the session. So I will put in that extra effort for you to help you get there. Yeah, my dad Amazing. was uh, smoking for 45 years and he, he stopped from a hypnotherapist. Good. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you how, how many sessions he had 
it was, a f it was about 15, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Because um, he always used to come home from work, he'd go in the garden, he'd, he'd stink, you know, mm. he'd stink of smoke. And it's like, oh. Now, I don't know the reason he gave up. I think possibly money because it cost a bomb, doesn't it? Or yeah. it was just for their health because I was, I don't know, maybe 10, I suppose. Yeah, maybe about 15, 20 years ago, he gave up. Yeah, so I, I imagine it is quite popular. Especially, yes. in, especially in January. Yeah, yes. and, and that's it. I, I do, again, I'd rather not take people on and have people come back to me said that worked rather than just taking somebody on for, for, for the money. So I think yeah. sometimes with, with with people coming for smoking, it, it, it kind of, <laughs> New Year's resolutions is basically part of the trimmings that come it's out for Christmas. One. So it's yes. kind of that, that sort of thing. So I have to make sure that people truly truly want last couple of years been quite quiet during january because i think people have been so skint with the cost of living just to heat their own homes and things like yeah, that yeah. recently so it's been a little quieter the last couple of years uh, on that side of thing and until like you know january's finished and christmas is is finished and stuff like that but yeah. going back to your dad stop him um sometimes it can just be an authority figure that that will will say that uh, sometimes it, it has the opposite effect so I tend to find out if somebody likes to have a more authority hypnotist that tells them exactly what to do, because some people that's the way they won't do it. I, I tend to find people that have been in the army, like a okay, hypnotherapist yeah, yeah. that tells them exactly what to do, because they're used to you know, being orders. told what to do and yeah. follow orders, exactly. But a lot of people will rebel against it. you know. And sometimes people hear from their doctors, you mustn't smoke, you shouldn't smoke, and they'll go, yeah, whatever, and keep smoking. And kind of keep in smoking. defiance of that doctor, but then a doctor can also uh, tell people that, you know, if you don't throw your, your cigarettes away, you'd be lucky if you've got a year, you know, because they've had like a lung removed or something. Yeah, yeah. And then they say, and think, God, I better do something about this now. And in that situation, then they do something about it. And the authority figure is enough then. You know, people do crazy things because somebody in a white coat told them. You might have seen that experiment, Darren Brown, and it's been done before. Yeah, yeah where somebody's given electric shocks every time they get a quiz question wrong and the electric shock gets a bit more. It's just recording of somebody screaming, but they will take the electric shock, the person who's in the being a volunteer, yeah, yeah. given these electric shocks. They generally think it's a genuine person way past the danger rate, which would kill somebody. And they keep going high and there's no screaming happening. There's just silence. Uh, just because somebody in a white coat has said, no, it's it's absolutely fine to go to 4,000 volts of electricity <laughs> right now. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay, my final question for you. You said in one of your personal regressions, you was a carpenter. Has that yes. transpired? Has that transpired in your life? Have you? Are you a good carpenter? I am a dreadful carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was a dreadful carpenter at school because I used to have woodwork lessons, uh, and I remember being uh, uh, dreadful at dovetails joining uh, mm. wood together. Uh, and that I, I was good in this regression, but no, I was I was hopeless. And it's something that I never <clears> felt <throat> I really needed to do. And maybe I just thought, you know what, I, I've, I've done it in that previous life. I don't need to it do any carpentry. didn't transpire. No, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and I got a made score hit. No, I don't think I do. Yeah, but I could show how bad it was. <laughs> just want to say thank you so much for taking your time just to explain and answer all our questions i'm sure you're probably fed up with us now but um, no god no no it's great i loved it thank you so much for taking your time and obviously everything that you do i think it's amazing i think at this point i think it's something i'm gonna have to give a go myself just to see well, if I can well no yeah. we we know a man that can help you <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know. so amazing. Paul, how, how how do you want to tell everybody how they can find you uh, to get in touch to learn yeah thank about you. you so uh a lot of people find me through my website now i've got to try and it's, it's try and keep it as up to date as possible with events that i'm i'm doing so yeah, they yeah. can go to paul goddard nlp.co.uk so that's paul goddard nlp.co.uk if you just put in paul goddard gloucester or paul goddard hypnosis paul goddard nlp 
uh, in Google, you should be able to find me quite easily. I've got um, a couple of YouTube, I've got loads of YouTube channels actually. Uh, too many to, to I, I should have just stuck to one, I think. But I've got Past Life Aggressions with Paul Goddard. I've got a Facebook, Paul Goddard Past Life Aggressions. I've got uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook, Paul Goddard NLP and Hypnotherapy. I've got another one, Paul Goddard Paranormal, and I've also just got a Paul Goddard, which will be basically a load of VHS tapes you can't get hold of anymore. You can't get on DVD or, or streaming. I'll just throw all these kind of crazy programs that I've got from recordings on there and a few kind of travel videos and little bits and pieces, a few documentaries I've made. But uh, if you're interested in the past life regression work, then you're welcome to... Uh, you're welcome to reach out to me, uh, message me. You can send me a friend request on Facebook, but I do like people to say um, where they, they've heard from me from or that they're interested in hypnosis or past life because you quite often get a friend request. They're sort of friends of 12 other people. So, okay, I accept them. And then they sort of say, have you heard the good news? You've just been entered into this competition. You know, yeah, you've got yeah, to yeah. delete <laughs> straight away, which is so <laughs> frustrating. So <laughs> just give me a message so I know, I know, uh, who you are and, and what you're interested in you can drop me an email but yeah if you go to the past life question with paul god i've got loads of different progressions on there so you can get to see a little bit what they're they're about and also as well you know uh mike you did a, a really good video for um paramete with your aggression on there and i just love the I video did, yeah. throughout so yeah it's, <laughs> it's a great video to watch as well Thank you. I presume all your services that you provide are on your website. They are. So there's a list. So if you go to services on the website, you'll, yeah. you'll see what I do, the layout, the costing. And, you know, I, I'm never somebody who does like a, a, a hard sell with anybody. So if somebody just wants to make inquiries, feel free to contact me. And, you know, as long as I do have some people that try and make inquiries and then after ask them you know sort of say well if you want to make an point because you know they're, they're getting on for half an hour and you think they're trying to get a session out of here for free which is <laughs> is, is not uh, yeah. so you ha uh, so if you just uh, you're happy to answer questions but you know i, I don't give out the the free sessions apart no. from the free sessions i give if anybody has because of what my dad went through a terminal illness and um they want to either have it for the stress they're feeling or maybe as long as i'd never give what they'd say false hope because i'm never quite sure if somebody will get better but if somebody's yeah. willing to give it a go then i will for free i've got a space that i save every week for free for somebody oh, who's wow, got terminal crazy. illness so Amazing. if somebody does have a terminal illness then they can contact me through the website and you know I'm, I'm more than happy to yeah if there's space book them in if not it'll be the week or the week after that because i think you know in that in that stage where somebody has been given a terminal illness, and particularly if they say it's gone through to the to the to the last stage it can be pretty, pretty frightening so the main thing i was, yeah, yeah. will do is, is help people feel a little little better and then i will help see if any healing can be done because i've heard some amazing stories as well but i never claim this will make you better it might work it might not work but if you're willing to give it a go you know then I, I, that's something that I do with people as well. Awesome. That's brilliant. Amazing. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for coming on our show. Thank you guys for joining us this week on Dad's Ladders and Kebabs. And um, thank you to our guest, Paul. Yeah, thank you, Paul, for coming on. Nice oh, to chat again. Yeah, and thank you both for, for welcoming me on here. It's been been really great. You're I enjoyed welcome. it. Brilliant. More than welcome. Thank you very much. See you later. See you next week, Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. See you in a bit. Thank you very much. Bye for now.